Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 820. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 819 to 821, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, 820, I want to see how to do a two way lookup conditional formatting, but there's a twist. For one of the ways that we're going to two ways we're going to look up, we have to find the second item. Now, if you really want to understand how to look up a second item, I covered that in, in Excel Magic Trick 819. But here's what we want. We want to be able to select production cost 2 and then entity 6 and not find the first one but the second one and then add a color. So really, this is an intersecting value, right? And I've done other videos on conditional formatting for intersecting values. But here, the complication is we can't find the first one. We want to find the second second one there. All right, let's come over to the sheet 820. Uh, just like in last video, the big trick is going to be how do you look up, if I say entity 6, how do you find the second one? So I'm going to just concentrate on this part right here. How do I look up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? So that's the seventh column. Now, the deal is when we use conditional formatting is that we have to build our formula up in a dialog box. But the trick is on a complicated one like this, it's much easier to come to a cell that's the same size as this. And that's all I did, this right here. Build your formula, copy it over, down and over, and see if the true shows up in the right place. Once you have it right, then you copy and paste into the dialog box. All right, so just like in last video, we somehow have to look up the second one. And again, we talked about in that video how there wasn't a set pattern here to where the second one would be, so we had to switch to an array formula. All right, just like in the last video, we're going to use small because we need a row number, um, or co I'm sorry, column number, one, two, three, or four, five, six, seven, right? And we really want the seven one. So we're going to build an array and we're going to say, hey, if any of these f4 are equal to entity 6, f4. Right now, we'd get a true and a true. Then what do we want to see? We want column numbers, right? So I'm going to use column, highlight these right here, and hit f4. Now, the problem with that is it would give me c is 3, d is 4, and that's not what we want. We need this denoted as 1, 2, 3. So we subtract from that column of C11, and I'm going to hit F4. That'll give me CC, which is 3 minus 3. That's not going to work. So in, in essence, what it's doing is it's adding, this is all of the column numbers, 3, 4, 5, right? And this subtracts 3 from all of them, but that won't work because 0 would be the starting number, so we add 1 back in. All right, so this little piece right here, if we hit F9, we can see it gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If we that is the value of true. Notice this logical test, we gave it more than one true or false. There's a bunch of numbers there. We don't need, oh, sorry, the, these are a bunch of true or falses. These are a bunch of numbers. We do not need the last argument false, so we just close it. If we were to highlight that and evaluate it with F9, 3 and 7. Seven's what we're interested in. Control Z. Now I see my screen tip for small, comma, and what do I want? The second one. Now, if I hit Enter, that's a, an array formula, so it won't work. So I have to Control, Shift, Enter. I can see the curly brackets up here. Now, the cool thing is, when, when we're in the spreadsheet, we have to Control, Shift, Enter, and get those curly brackets. When we're up in the dialog box, we're just going to paste it there, and it's going to just work. All right, so that's not what we want, but at least we got our 7 right. Now we need to isolate the 7. We need to say, is this column 7? So the way we do that is we're going to say, is that equal to? And we're using the columns. Whereas column just says what column number is, columns counts columns. So I'm going to say D21, because that's the cell I'm in. Dollar sign D21, colon D21. One of the column references is locked. This one does not. So as we copy it to the side, this will give us the numbers 1, 2, 3. I'm going to say anytime that's equal to the whatever small is delivering, which is 7. Control Shift Enter. Copy it down and over. Oh, look at that. Now I already conditionally formatted this just to highlight when it says true. Um, but that's not quite what we want. We want the intersecting value, right? So right now it should be 
that one right there, no problem. There's two conditions. Is it the right column? And is this row, does this row have the production cost at the head here? So we're just going to slightly amend this. That's just delivering true or false, right? I have two true and falses, so I'm going to use and. And is beautiful because you can have one logical test, two, or more. We only have two. If they both evaluate to true, then and will deliver a true. So what's the second test? Notice I'm in this parallel um, shape here. So anytime I'm in this row, I need to say, is the row header over here equal to that? So I'm going to say that right there. And when I move the formula to the side, as if it's going to be up in the conditional formatting dialog box, it needs to be locked on that. But when I copy it down, it needs to move. So I'm going to say F4, lock the column reference, but not the row. Anytime that's equal to, boop, and locked in all direction. That's the first logical test, comma. There's the second logical test. I come to the end, close parentheses, Control Shift Enter, drag it down and over. Wow, that works. Now, the, an alternative to this, and we saw this in last video, is uh, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And instead of small, I'm going to clear my clipboard. And just like last video, I'm going to copy that, Control-C, and the column part, Control-C. I can see them collecting up here. I'm going to delete all of that. And I'm going to use aggregate, because aggregate doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. I'm going to use the small function, which is 15. Comma, I'm going to use the ignore errors, which is 6, because they'll be divided by uh, 0 errors. And this is what's nice about the aggregate. It's just as if it was the small, but it doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. The array is our column numbers. And I put that in parentheses, because I'm going to divide it by, in parentheses, the logical test. right? Comma, and there's the K. That means aggregate sitting in for the small, so I simply put a 2. Close parentheses on that, close parentheses on the AND, Control-Enter. Now this is kind of silly. Both of these will work, and we should try both of them. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to copy this. Escape, I copied it. When you're doing a sea of formulas like this, and you're going to highlight the conditional formatting. Now watch this. Here's another cool trick. I can highlight like this. Actually, let me highlight like this, and then hold Control. The active cell has to be up on the top, parallel to where I copied the formula to. By the way, I can do conditional formatting like this, and it won't put anything there. Now I'm going to go to Home, This, and I think it's Manage Rules or new rule. The keyboard shortcut is Alt-O-D. New rule, formula, and there, Control-V. Format, yellow, click OK, click OK, click OK. you got to be kidding me. That array formula. Here, <coughs> there's a Control-Shift, but it worked up there. That's just amazing. Let's test this. That is just so cool. Now I'm going to copy this sheet over and try that other one, too. A great way to copy sheets is to point to it and hold the control. Oh, no, I'm not going to hold control. I'm going to point to this sheet and drag it up. Right now, there's a piece of paper. It is moving wherever that little black arrow is. But watch what happens to the piece of paper if I hold control. Oh, now it's got a plus. Now I'm going to come um, right here, drag it back over here. I'm going to call it. Um, 20.1. And now I'm going to copy this one. This is the aggregate. Control C, escape. Oh. Oh, no problem. Check this out. This is a cool trick. If you have some conditional formatting, and see how that's the active cell? That's not what I want. I want this. So I'm going to hold Control and click over there. Alt O D. And notice this is highlighted. It, D is underlined. So if you highlight something and you want to delete it, it's Alt O D, Alt D. And now I can new rule, formula, click. This is the aggregate one, right? Aggregate. So both of them should work. I'm going to click that, click OK, click OK, click OK. Nice thing about here is you can see it visually right before you make it. Let's see if we change it back over here. Just amazing. So array formulas in conditional formatting 
You betcha. All right, see you next trick.